All right, guys, so today I'm going to uh, do a little lens review. We're gonna revive the vintage lenses series here a little bit. This lens is not full on vintage, as you can probably tell from the title. It's a, a 97 introduction lens that was made until 2002. It's the uh, Pentax 80 to 320. Uh, it's an f4.5 to f5.6 lens. So this was, a, like I said, a late 90s lens that came out for autofocus film camera bodies that was uh, made it until about 2002. If you're looking for a budget lens to get you out there in that telephoto range, um, the 80 to 320 is a pretty good option in that area. Um, it competes with other lenses such as the Tamron 100 to 300, the 70 to 300, I mean, I think would be the better way to say that. The Sigma had a 70 to 300, I think, as well. Uh, a couple options like that. And uh, honestly, I think the little Pentax lens is a little better than that. The silver version, like this one here, uh, you can pick them up pretty easily for $80 or less on eBay, used camera sites, things like that. I'm really liking it. Uh, I've got it set up on the K70 here. Um, we're filming on the K1 now. You know, it's been a great lens on full frame and APS-C. I'm actually relatively impressed with it image quality wise. I'll go ahead and address this. It's an $80 lens. The build quality is not amazing. On my copy, the extended part here, it does have a fair bit of play in it. The one I got, like I said, it's a used lens. The little window here's got a little crack. There's some paint chips down here on the aperture ring. Things like that you're, you know, you can expect on a used lens. Surprisingly, the rubber on the focus ring and the zoom ring, both in pretty darn good shape, considering how old they are. You see a lot of older Sam Sigmas and uh, Tamrons, even some old Canon glass where the rubber on the lens starts getting all stretchy and flopping around and falling off. And this one's doing pretty good in that regard. But yeah, it's real plastically, kind of lightweight, relatively small front element for what it is, 58 millimeters. Like I said, guys, it's an $80 lens nowadays. The, so the build quality, don't compare it to a new 70 to 200 F2.8. But once you move on from the build quality and you get into image quality, that's where things get a lot better for your 80 bucks. This lens from 80 to 200, it's actually pretty sharp from 80 to 200. You can go out to about 230, 240 millimeters. You lose a little bit of sharpness, but it's still good. And then from 240 to 320, it just kind of progressively softens until it's not that amazing. At, at full 320, even stop down to f8, f11, it's not gonna blow your mind. It's, it's relatively soft once you get it zoomed out all the way, but when you're shooting between 80 and 200, it's actually relatively sharp across the aperture range. So even wide open at 4.5, you can get some relatively decent sharpness, especially considering the price point and the zoom range on this lens. When you stop this lens down, it does progress to get better. Uh, same focal ranges, 80 to 200. Uh, once you reach F11, that seems to be the sweet spot on my copy. At F11 on this lens, it's pretty darn sharp. Um, Kind of surprised at how well that does. F8 is still pretty good. Uh, 5.6, a little worse. 4.5, a little worse, but still acceptable from 80 to 200 millimeters. And then from there, it's it's kind of just up to your tolerance on what's acceptable or not. But for $80, it does pretty darn well. Another thing that I'm very much enjoying with this is the compatibility. It's Got the auto setting on the aperture. So on the K70 and the K1 both, the camera can fully control the lens. All of the focus modes work, all of the shooting modes work. It's it's a native lens, obviously, a KAF mount. Um, even though it's an older generation, everything's still functional on the new bodies, which is an awesome thing Pentax does. So that's that's been really handy, really nifty, really great. Back on the image quality, the bokeh on this lens is very good as well. Uh, in my opinion, bokeh being as subjective as it is, you know, it's arguable whether or not it's amazing. But uh, at f4.5, I'm getting really smooth, nice backgrounds. It's not distracting. Uh, most of the time things are really clean. Uh, this has an eight bladed diaphragm for the aperture if I'm recalling correctly. So yeah, it's, it's really nice as the blip bokeh is surprisingly pleasing. Uh, the bokeh balls and the specular highlights stay nice and round for the most part. Uh, you don't get the little cat eye ones very often. I'm really impressed with it uh, as in terms of bokeh. And then since I know a lot of you guys are still shooting the APS-C cameras, and like I said, I bought this primarily to work on my K70. My experience in Micro Four Thirds taught me that a lens that's good on a full frame camera doesn't necessarily always translate down to crop sensors. On the Micro Four Thirds camera, some of my favorite lenses on prior full frame stuff did not look nearly as good on Micro Four Thirds. So 
I did learn from that and I expected it to be a little worse on the K70, but I was kind of surprised to see it's not really. On the K70, uh, sharpness and everything seems on par with the K1 when you account for the lack of resolution between the K1 and the K70. You get good sharpness still, same focal ranges, same apertures seem to work the best. Uh, it's really interchangeable between the K1 and the K70. I've shot this lens a lot on both cameras and have been happy with it on both. The uh, only difference is the usual difference between crop and full frame and that's uh, you can get closer equivalent focal lengths. The, the bokeh and everything is a little different. That's about it. Yeah, it performs great on both cameras. That's one thing I'm really loving with the Pentax stuff. Even my cheap little K70 has pixel shift and uh, shake reduction and all the goodies that the K1 has for the most part. So I can throw this 80 to 320 here on the K70, set it on my tripod and do some pixel shifting with it. And that really milks the most quality you can get out of these old lenses. It's really great. I think uh, Pentax did a really good thing there by letting us use old K-mount lenses and get the most quality we possibly can out of them with their modern cameras. So that's that's been pretty cool. So the other thing I want to discuss briefly was the autofocus performance using this lens on the K1 and the K70. In single AF mode, it's pretty quick, pretty to the point. It's it's pretty it's quiet enough. I mean it I'll show you here. It's not the quietest. It sounds like a 1990s film camera lens because it is a 1990s film camera lens. And hopefully you should be able to hear that. So it does sound like a 1990s film camera lens. Um, in continuous, it's a little bit more annoying because you get the back and forth action with it um, as you're tracking. And it can be a little bit louder in continuous and more annoying. Uh, sometimes it sounds pretty bad, like it's trying to destroy itself. Um, so I don't use it in continuous, very often it works, but I, would, I don't recommend it in continuous. It's not gonna be the best burning in sports lens out there, um, but it can get you by. I've gotten some decent photos of helicopters flying over and birds and whatnot. So you can't completely write it off, but you have to know your equipment well enough to make it work um, when it comes to that. The continuous AF's not the best. Um, like I said, those singles, pretty good. It's pretty quick for an older lens. Again, we can't compare it to an $1,800, 70 to 200 that's modern. But if, if you are comparing it to that, it's slower, but it's not unacceptably slow. It still is accurate and locks on most of the time. On the K1, I just hooked it up and ran with it and it worked fine. On the K70, I did have to do a calibration on it, but it's super easy to do. You just need to find, find something that's got some depth to it, like a slanted, piece of paper with words on it, pick a word you're going to focus on and see if it hits it or not and adjust it accordingly. It's really easy, simple to do. You don't necessarily have to buy one of those expensive calibration targets. But yeah, guys, this lens has been pretty cool. I like it. Um, $80 to get into. I can't complain about that. The zoom range is really nice. Shots out to 280. I've had be acceptably sharp for me. Uh, going to 320, I've gotten a few that worked, but it gets pretty soft at 320. F11 seems to be the sweet spot on this lens, but when you're in the 80 to 200 range, 4.5 is acceptably sharp for me. I've gotten good photos with it at wide open between 80 and 200. That's one thing I did neglect to mention. It stays at F4.5 nearly all the way out to 200 millimeters on the wide end of the aperture. So somewhere right around there is where it switches over to start stopping down. So you do get a pretty good range at 4.5 on this lens. So again, it's not gonna be the best low light indoor lens. It's not a 2.8 lens. It is great for just having a general purpose walk around lens to complement my K1. Then again, like I said, with the Pentax cameras, you've got pixel shift and shake reduction helping you out. So it, it's a really nice well-rounded budget package. I'm really happy with it for that reason. So yeah, guys, um, if you've enjoyed this video, uh, I'd appreciate it if you click that like button, hit the subscribe channel, all that crap that YouTubers are always asking for. Um, it really does make a difference. So uh, hit that like and subscribe. I'm going to throw some links in the in the uh, description to my blog where you can find the written review on this lens. And that'll get you to my Instagram page and Facebook and all of that stuff as well. So yeah, thanks for watching guys and we will see you next time.